Hello guys. So last time we tried to figure out these two million op uh, possibilities and we figured out that they were pretty hard to do. So what we came up with is an artificial way of figuring them out. Which basically means that everything we have here is no longer as valid as we thought it was. We're going to have to use some other method to figure this out. Now, I do not need the size, I believe. Yeah, we don't care about the size. This here, we're going to have to use later on for artificial. So I'm going to move it all the way here and say to be used for artificial, artificial testing or analysis. Um, this here is just used to show results. This here is to be used to show results. Uh, this just shows us our array. That's fine. This here shows us what our array looks like. That's fine for now. This here is unused, and if we're working with artificial systems, we won't need it. But for the time being, I'm going to leave it just in case we decide on using it. Um, even though I like the artificial system a lot more. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate it for now. We'll figure out if we're going to incorporate it, how we would do that. So we'll figure that out later. For now, it's fine. So there we go. Perfect. Now things are a little more simplified, and hopefully that will help us uh, figure out how to move proceed basically with what's going on. So let's move down here and go back to our analysis. This basically tells us if there is a flush, what the flush type is, period. Uh, that's all we need. So let me condense this really quickly and get back to you guys. All right, guys, so I did condense this. And now we have our flush. And I added a note that zero means there's no flush. N is the type. So zero means there's no flush. And then if it is not zero, then whatever it is, one, two, three, four, will tell us what type of flush is there. Now, what we need to do here, or what I would like to do, is figure out if there is a straight flush. Now, how do we do that? We basically take our numbers. Uh, if there is a flush, right? So the system will know if there is a flush. We set up a stop system. So if this is true, which means there is a flush, then I would like to take that data and analyze it for straightness, shall I say. So let's go ahead and work on that right now. So if this is true, I'm going to create a huge case structure right now for this. Uh, and we'll figure out what to do with it later. But if it is true, then please take in the data. Here's our array. This is a this is a 13 number array, and it has a flush. It has five ones. And I would like to know if those five ones are in a row or not. How would I do that? Well. The way I see it, the easiest thing to do is to run a sum. And basically that would be basically that would be adding the previous number to the next number. So basically if we have one, 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 the adding sum would be so if this is one, we would take the previous value here, which is 0, plus this number to give us 1. If it's 1, previous value plus this number to give us the added 1. If this is 0, set it to 0. So, and we go on forth until we see if or if, if we have a 5. So, what this means is we're going to need a for loop in here. So, I'm going to create a for loop where these numbers will enter one by one, we will have an initial value of zero starting this system. Now, every time a number comes in, we check if the number is equal to zero. If the number is equal to zero, we're going to have a true or false. If the number 
is equal to 0, that is true, then we shall set it to 0. Otherwise, we shall take that number, add it to the previous number, and send that along the line. Now this here will be a shift register. This new number will be updated. This number will go out as a uh, the value that we actually care about. So let us condense this a little and figure out how we are going to create a test to see if this works. Uh, that should be a very interesting test to, cr to try to create. So, um, almost done here. There we go. This is pretty condensed right now. And now, let us go ahead and try a test. The numbers that come out, I'm going to create an indicator. This indicator should indicate for us whether there is a summation or not. Make this smaller and longer. Um, there we go. Let's try to create one. First of all, I'm going to set the system to the river. In the river, and I'm going to run it on an endless loop. So in the river, first of all, if you want to flush, we're going to need them all to be the same. I'm going to make them all spades, or at least these five. Then I want them to be in a row. There we go. Now they are in a row. So now, when the system reaches this, one, two, three, four, five, there's six. Ah, let's, there might be a system mistake here. If this is uh -huh, not just equal, if this is greater or equal to five. Let's run it one last time. So yes, it is. It's a spade. And here, the system, as you can see, goes up to five. Perfect. That is exactly what I was looking for. Now, what if this skips a beat? Let's run this endlessly again. Jack, 10, 9. And we do have a flush, but we do not have a straight. If I click this, we should, in the next processing cycle, uh -huh, queen, jack, 10. Oh, this is not a spade. There we go. Now we have a straight. Uh, perfect. The system works. That is excellent. Uh, now what we need to do is search for a 5. So now that we know the system works, I'm going to go ahead and condense this even more. I love condensing. You guys know that I love condensing. I don't even know why I tell you anymore. So uh, there we go. We are done here. The next step is simply to run a check. So we do a array, we do a search 1D array, and we search this 1D array for, what, is this the search, did I do search? Split, oh, we're not doing split, we're doing search, search. So search this 1D array for the element 5. Now obviously we might hit something higher than 5, but that is not a problem. We look for the 5. If index of the element will be here, if it is found, so if this is uh, greater or equal to 0, so if it doesn't find a 5, it's not going to be greater or equal, obviously. If it is greater or equal to 0, we are going to create a selector and basically the selector will tell us if there is a flush or not. Um, let's see, what am I thinking here? If there is a 5, that means the flush is from point 1. So by giving it the index of where the 5 is, I kind of inadvertently, automatically tell it what the highest number of that flush is. So a straight flush, even when we do straights here, we're going to know a straight what the highest number is. So that's going to be interesting. So if, if, if it is greater than 0, that means there is a certain number, 
we take that number, we subtract 5 from it. Am I right here? So we do x minus 5. I'm pretty sure I'm right, but just in case. So there we go, we do x minus 5. That will give us the number that I would like to output here, which hopefully can never be 0. Or can it? Let's see. So if I have a straight, oh, there's an error. There's two errors. Um, if that doesn't work, just give us a zero. In the false case, just give us a zero. Now this number here represents an ace, as we know. So the ace is right there. Um, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and run this real quickly and see what the, this says. If I convert this to king, queen, jack, and 10, run it again. Now I have a 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, this will output a number. Oh, I did not see what the number was. What is this number? Uh, we just actually care about the last number that might come out of this. The number that comes out is negative 1. Negative 1 is an ace. So we're going to have to take whatever value and subtract minus 5 plus 2, so minus 3. And this should give us the actual 1, 2, 3, 4, which is, in this case, a 1 is an ace. Um, we could actually also further, so now we know it's a, we know that if we do if if we do x minus 4 that gives us so x minus 4 is 0 at the level of ace and a 0 should be in our case the number 13 so we do 13 minus x minus 4. And if we are lucky, that should give us the correct value of an ace. And it did. It tells us that there is a 5 to 13. Now what if there wasn't one? In this case, there is no 5. Because Let's see, we are missing the 9. If I go ahead and add the 9 and run it, it will tell us we have one up to 11. 11 is the queen. Perfect, the system works. Uh, what if we had the minimum, minimum possible 2? No, yeah, 2. Seems I can't select 2. Let's run it continuously. 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, five. Oh, we need 6, 2. There we go. The absolute highest is 1 till 5. Oh, to 5. That is wrong. 13, 12, 11. 13, 12, 11, 10. Oh, an ace is 14, not 13. 14 minus. Run again. Sorry. Therefore, it's 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Perfect. Does the ace count as a 1? Let's check. I'm going to check online be right back. So it seems that in poker, Texas Hold'em, the ace can count as a 1. So basically, I believe that we have to assume that every time there is an ace, the number 1 is also associated with it. And we'll worry about that next time. Uh, see you guys then.